Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I like that this is on actually said my name. Um, <laughs> so recently, as I became Pastor Burmese pastoral intern, uh, every few weeks he gives me a book to read. And recently he gave me this book called Grace Walks, which really impacted my life and really gave me a deeper, more profound, more simple in its own right understanding of grace, which as I now see, I've had like completely different understanding of grace. I've, had, I've been living my life so much harder than it needs to be. Because, you know, when all of us get saved, for, or for at least me, when I got saved, we all we kind of have like a, just a general understanding of God. We're like, oh, God loves me, he forgave me of my sins. And it's really nice. It's a really simple love that you have for God. And that's how it was. I got saved, I don't know, when I was a kid, when I was really young. And at that time, I was stupid. I was a little kid. Most kids are not the smartest people compared to when you get older. When you look back when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I was dumb. I did a bunch of dumb stuff all the time. All kids are. You have to be. But at the same time, <laughs> but at the same time, when you are a kid and when you do first, or whenever um, you first accept Christ, when your knowledge of him is really limited, so to speak, you have this simple love about it. But you have this simple love and trust in him that as we progress, as we get more head knowledge about him starts to diminish it. I have no idea when or where this notion came into the church, but for some reason, a lot of Christians nowadays, I'm, I was at fault of that too, that we think for some reason after we're saved, after we receive God's grace, that we still have to do stuff, that we still have to somehow go into ministry to get him to like us, to get him to uh, be happy with us, so he'll just be like proud of us, and so we'll, we'll see him okay in his eyes, we just get this weird notion. I don't know where that came from, but it's not true at all. Because, um, as it says in, actually, no, I won't use that yet. It's not true at all because, as we know, God, uh, Jesus died on the cross for, our, for all our sins. But not only that, when he died on the cross, he took all our burdens as well. He took all our strife, all our worries, all our fears. He took them all to the cross. He took anything we feel in this world that is negative, that anything of this world that is negative is not of him, obviously, because there's no fear, there's no doubt, there's no suffering in heaven, there's no suffering around God, there's none of that. And so he took all that from us. And so when we received him, when we received his um, Holy Spirit in us, all that left with us as well. But for some reason we get this notion from the enemy that we still have to do all this work, we still have to do works to be okay with God. And that's not at all what God wants. It's like, since as we know, by this time, we're in a relationship with God. We're not just under someone's foot. We're not a slave to him. We're in a relationship. And it's kind of like, oh, well, it is like being in an earthly relationship. It's kind of like being at work all day and trying to work for just your, uh, your significant other and just saying like, oh, do you love me yet? No, of course they don't. They just want to spend time with you. They don't want you out working all the time and that's your way of expressing love to them. It's kind of the same way with God. When you go out and do like ministry, a part of us feels like, oh God, you must love me so much now. Look at all these souls I'm winning. Look at all this good I'm doing. No, that's not what God ultimately wants. Yes, he does ask us to do that. But ultimately what he wants is just to spend time with us. He just wants to get to know us. He wants us to get to know him since he knows us perfectly. That's why in Matthew 23, verse 37, you can put it on there if you want. You don't have to know. But in there it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first <clears throat> and greatest commandment. That's all God wants us to do. That is the first thing he commands us to do before anything else. He just wants us to love him. And he doesn't want us to be just burdened with all these different things through our lives, whether it just be like fear of financial matters, fear of the future, just fear of anything. I mean, let's go to um, uh, Matthew 11, verse 20 through 30. Jesus says, come to me, all, all of you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus wants to give us his burden, which is light and easy. He doesn't want us to have to burden all this life by ourselves. 
God, is, we didn't just receive eternal life. We received a God whose grace extends past just saving us from the grave. It extends into our entire lives, every aspect of it. I mean, in my life, myself, what I do now, since reading this book and really understanding grace, every single day I wake up, I pray to God and I just thank Him. I just thank Him for just being alive and I just submit and give my entire day to Him. I just say, God, take this day. Take all the stress from it. Take all my fears. Take all my burdens in this day. I give them to you. I'm not going to worry about them because you're going to take care of me. And as you can see throughout the entire Bible, our God is a God of promise. Our God is a God of covenant. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't ever break a promise. We, on the other hand, tend to try to help God, help us. As we can see in, with Abraham and um, Sarah, when God promised them a son, he did. And they're like, maybe God needs our help. Maybe God who created the universe kind of needs our help just a little bit. And you end up with Ishmael. <laughs> and so don't try to help God help you. Just allow God's love to just fill you up. And once you're at that point of abundance where you have just so much love, it's just outpouring, that's when you should go out and do ministry. That's when you should go out and help people with that abundance. So you're not feeding from, or you're not taking from your own spiritual tank. You're taking from just the abundance of God's love. It's just so uh, overflowing because God has an infinite amount of love. We can't, out, we can't just expend all of God's energy. We can't expend all of God's resources. It's impossible. And this is what this is exactly what God says in our, uh, this is what Jesus says in Matthew 11 that He wants to give us His burden, which is light and easy. And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you so much for being such a graceful, gracious God, a God who. Although you sent your son down here to die for our sins, you still extend your grace past that. That, ex that receiving eternal, eternal life is just the very first stepping stone. That after that, it's a relationship with you, Father. And in that relationship, you want to take care of us. You want us to be at ease. You want us to be relaxed with you, Father. And so I just pray over all of us here today that we all just learn to give you our burdens. We learn to take your burden, Lord Jesus your burden and your yoke, which is light and easy, so that the rest of our days are easy and we can just focus on being in a relationship with you, God, and not just acting like we're your slave who has to do something, Father. We are your children, and you love us, dear, and just more so than anything else in creation, you love us, your children. So I just pray that any and all burdens we have throughout the week, we just learn to give them to you and surrender them to you and just trust you and know that you will take care of us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.